Well, uh, you know, uh, actually, in mo all my years in the United Nations, uh, that is over 10 years, and in all my years in international life, I have never seen, which is over 40 years, I have never seen such an extraordinary display of uh, American heavy-handedness as uh, uh, we are witnessing today. As I was talking uh, in the Security Council, sharing our analysis and frustration over the situation of Syria, Ambassador Power chose to talk to you. The only thing her deputy had to say uh, in response to my comments was that the U.S. investigating is investigating what has happened at Derazor. As Ambassador Power walked in, first thing she said, she was not interested in what I, I, what I had to say because what I was saying is a stunt. So it's, there is no point uh, in my listening to Ambassador Power. So I decided to leave the room, my delegation is there, and to share my reflections with you. Uh, in fact, uh, 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 this is a very serious concern that uh, we wanted and we did uh, share today with the members of the Security Council. As you know, we convened the con consultations of the Security Council because the United States has uh, bombed uh, the Syrian armed forces in Derazor. And that, as well, of course, is one of the uh, most important symbols of resistance against ISIL because it has been besieged by ISIL for, uh, for a very long time, for a couple of years. Uh, the Syrian armed forces uh, suffered serious casualties, over 60 soldiers killed, over 100 soldiers injured, and uh, uh, there is a threat uh, of uh, ISIL advancing on that, as well. uh, Fortunately, our uh, air forces, Russian air forces, were, uh, were able to come to the uh, assistance of the Syrian armed forces. So we hope this tragedy of ISIL taking the Azor is not going to happen. Having conducted this airstrike, the United States uh, has violated two of its commitments. One is the commitment to cessation of hostilities, which the United States undertook together with us in February and which we reconfirmed just a few days ago. And the other is the commitment uh, the United States gave to the government of Syria when the United States started its air campaign uh, two years ago. Uh, the, the United States promised to the Syrian government that air, their airstrikes are not going to affect the position of the Syrian uh, armed forces. That did not put the United States fully in line with the international law because they did not receive the consent of the Syrian government, but the fact that the United States committed not to, uh, not to strike the position of the Syrian government created certain conditions for continued cooperation with the United States politically and uh, on a number of practical aspects of uh, the situation uh, in Syria. It is quite significant and uh, frankly suspicious that the United States chose to conduct this particular airstrike at this time. Why would all of, a sudden, all of a sudden the United States choose to help the Syrian armed forces defending the Razor? After all, they did nothing when ISIL was advancing on Palmyra. Uh, ISIL made uh, a hundred mile march without being attacked by, co by the coalition. Uh, all of a sudden, the United States decides to come uh, to the assistance of the Syrian armed forces uh, defending, defending, uh, defending uh, Dar Azor. It is quite significant, and uh, I would suggest not uh, accidental, that this happened just two days before the arrangements, Russian-American arrangement, uh, were supposed to come into force. The arrangements were been negotiating with the United States for a long time. As you know, after lengthy negotiations on the 9th of December, Foreign Minister Lavrov and Secretary Kerry concluded uh, an agreement on, on uh, September 9, which actually put in force a number of agreements which they had negotiated over the period of the previous two months. For reasons we cannot fully understand, the United States uh, does not, uh, did not agree to share with you, or even with the members of the Security Council, uh, the text of those documents. But I'll uh, read two excerpts from them, from two of those documents, for you simply to understand what it was all about. Now, the preambular part of the document which was agreed upon on September 9, <clears throat> the Russian Federation and the United States intend to undertake joint efforts to stabilize the situation in Syria with special measures for the Aleppo region. Delineation of territories controlled by ISIL, Jabhat al-Nusra, and moderate armed opposition forces remains a key priority, as does separating moderate opposition forces from Nusra. Then an excerpt from 
uh, one of the previous documents, the one <coughs> which was negotiated in July. The purpose of the joint implementation group is to enable expanded coordination between the United States and the Russian Federation. The participants of the United States and the Russian Federation through the joint implementation group are to work together to defeat Jabhat al-Nusra and Daesh within the context of strengthening the uh, cessation of hostilities as support and supporting the political transition process outlined in UN Security Council Resolution 2254. So that, th those were extremely important arrangements, which uh, in our view could uh, uh, really be a game changer and uh, uh, greatly help intensify uh, our joint efforts to fight and defeat Nusra and uh, ISIL, and also providing better conditions for the political, political process. There were other elements in those agreements. Some of them included a uh, humanitarian aspect of the situation on the ground. As it was agreed, the operation of the Joint Implementation Group was supposed to uh, take effect seven days before the D-Day. D-Day was determined to be September 12th. So uh, the beginning of the work of the Joint Implementation Group was supposed to be September, September 19th. So if the United States wanted to conduct an effective strike on Nusra in Derazor or anywhere else, they could wait two more days and coordinate with uh, uh, our military and make sure and be sure that they are stri striking the right people. Instead, they chose to conduct this reckless, reckless operation. As you know, the United States, within the past few days, has been emphasizing the humanitarian situation as it has been complaining that not all the things which were supposed to happen on the humanitarian level were happening. And in fact, uh, we heard them say a few days ago that because of the humanitarian situation, there are no conditions to start implementing the arrangements of the joint implementation group. But today we know that uh, all the permissions which the Syrian government was supposed to give uh, have been given for humanitarian supplies to reach uh, people in need in various parts of, uh, uh, of Syria, and that uh, the humanitarian convoy to eastern Aleppo is supposed to leave tomorrow morning. So clearly there are no more grounds to refrain from the implementation of the joint implementation group ar arrangement in the humanitarian sphere of the situation. So it may well be, one has to conclude, that the airstrike has been conducted in order to disrupt the uh, operation of, uh, uh, of the joint implementation group and actually not to allow it to be uh, set in motion. Uh, is it, uh, it may well be, and this is just a conjecture, that the United States is trying to hide the fact that they are actually not in control of the situation, that they allow the situation to get out of control. As you know, we have said that on numerous occasions in February of this year, we were told by a high-level American official that it will take them two to three weeks to make sure that the so-called moderate opposition distances itself from Jabhat al-Nusra. It never happened. In fact, we saw some motions just a few, day, a few days or weeks ago, but the real separation has not happened. Then we have, assur we have received assurances from the United States that as we recommit, renew the cessation of hostilities, they will make sure that the so-called moderate opposition groups uh, uh, recommit also to this cessation of hostilities. But what we heard instead that 20 of those groups, which in our assessment uh, comprise 70 percent of the so-called moderate fighters, almost immediately declared that they were not going to uh, comply with the renewed cessation of hostilities regime. So the way it, it looks is that the United States really allowed the genie to get out of the bottle, having been arming, preparing, training various armed opposition groups, ignoring the fact that they have been working with uh, Jabhat al-Nusra and other terrorist groups, ignoring the fact that many of those groups which they regarded as moderate opposition were resorting to terrorist tactics, and uh, uh, you know, now uh, they're out there, uh, not about to, uh, to listen to those uh, in Washington who are trying to reach political agreement. In fact, the big question which sort of I asked in consultation room, and which I think one has to ask, uh, those people who have been following uh, the U.S. policies and been uh, reading the statements uh, which have been made by American politicians, who is in charge in Washington? Is it the White House or the Pentagon? Because 
uh, we have heard statements uh, from the Pentagon which simply fly in the face of what we have heard from President Obama and Secretary Kerry. So uh, this is an extremely, extremely uh, crucial time in uh, uh, our efforts uh, to uh, move Syria to a more peaceful situation and to uh, make sure that we can uh, fight the terrorists. Frankly, I don't know what the next step is going to be or what uh, the next move we can expect. Unfortunately, from what uh, I heard Ambassador Power say as she walked into the room, this is not a very good omen. They are, they are, they are, losing, they are losing control. Do you, do you, from what you said, it seems like a Russian official adamantly believed that this wasn't a mistake uh, and that it was a, a purposeful. And second question is a humanitarian. Are the uh, convoys uh, laden with food are starting to Aleppo tomorrow as planned before? Yes. Very, <coughs> very complicated scheme was worked out for the Castello Road so that Castello Road could be used <coughs> first for humanitarian supplies and then as uh, soon as other additional arrangements are put in place could be used for all other traffic. So those arrangements are there and uh, the first convoy is supposed to <coughs> proceed tomorrow morning. I suppose so. As my first question, from, from what you, you just said and told us, it seems that you are completely sure and convinced that this attack is not by mistake, it's not by Well, error. you know, I've, I've explained why I think it would be rather strange to believe that this is not a, a mistake, that all of a sudden <clears throat> they decided to help the Syrian government forces uh, and uh, without any coordination with us. Is, is this the end of the deal between the United States and Russia? I'm sorry? Is this the end of the deal between the United States and Russia? You know, as I say, this is a very big question mark. Very big question mark. Uh, I would be very interested to, to see how Washington is going to react if what Ambassador Power has done today is uh, any indication of their possible reaction, then we're in serious trouble. But I do hope that uh, they will find a way to convince us and everybody else that they are serious about political, uh, political settlement in Syria, that they are serious about fighting terrorists, and they would not allow those for whom any kind of cooperation is Russia, with Russia is more uh, dangerous politically or otherwise than uh, uh, the triumph of ISIL and terrorists uh, in, uh, in Syria and Iraq. Ambassador, 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 Ambassador. 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 Clarify something for us because there was a, a statement from the spokeswoman for your foreign minister in Moscow floating the idea that the US was colluding directly with ISIL. Do you believe that to be the case? Well, you know, one, of course, uh, this, is, this is an extreme case scenario. I suppose uh, this scenario is subjected by the fact that at times uh, one had the impression that the United States is trying to protect Nusra on the ground. Uh, colluding. Well, we don't, have, we don't have specific evidence, but uh, delivering airstrikes and quite effective airstrikes, you know, 60 people dead, 100 people uh, injured uh, against those who are fighting Nusra, you know, one wonders. But Not Nusra, you're but ISIL. Kill people by mistake as well, including a lot of civilians. You know, I've explained uh, in some detail why it is very strange to believe that that has been uh, an accidental, accidental thing. The timing, you know, and uh, other aspects of the situation uh, indicate that it, it, it may well be a provocation. But uh, let's see what the next move is going to be from, uh, from Washington. If, uh, if they go about blaming Russia for everything, including this airstrike, then uh, I'm afraid their intentions would become extremely clear. Do you expect the Security Council meeting on Syria to still take place? And what in particular about Ambassador Power's comments leads you to believe we have trouble? I'm sorry? What was it about Ambassador Power's comments that leads you to believe that there's no negotiations to be had? Well, uh, uh, because, uh, well, first, uh, I was appalled that while I was talking, she was talking to the media. You know, this is a very serious thing. And then as she walked in, she talk, she, without hearing what I had to say, she said that what I said was a stunt, and then she didn't really care to hear what I had to say. After that, I walked out, you know? and. Uh, Others are listening to her, to her rumblings. Yeah. Understood. Do you expect um, the Security Council, the high-level Security Council meeting on Syria, to still take well, place? Well, this is uh, this is a decision to be taken. You know, I think still a very serious discussion 
the, the situation uh, under any kind of circumstances, I think this, uh, a very serious discussion would be proper. Matthew. Okay. The, the, the Pentagon has, a, has been quoted saying that, they're cons that they would consider condolence payments to the families of the Syrian soldiers killed. I'm wondering, do you have any response to that? What do you think of no, that? No, I, I haven't heard the statement, but uh, I haven't heard it. It's for the Syrian government to respond. On Thursday, Mr. Ms. Power said that the Syrian army should not conduct any airstrikes in any area, including the areas which are populated by al Nusra Front. Does the agreement of 9 September include that? And where does the Syrian army fall into that agreement? Uh, the agreement uh, which was concluded on the 9th of September does contain some provisions which limit the areas where the Syrian air force might be used. Uh, do you have intention, Mr. The, Ambassador? The, 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 the deal is that there were supposed to be certain sectors where Nusra, Nusra is deployed, which would be taken care of by Russian and American air force. And since the presence of Russian and American air force would be there, there would be no need for the Syrian government to, to fly in those sectors. Today, how serious was it that a clash could have happened in the skies between Russian and American fighters? I have, I have no details. Uh, first of all, uh, Madam uh, Power said that she blamed the hypocritic uh, polit politics by Russia. This is uh, the, uh, a clear accusation to Russia regarding the situation in Syria, that you've never uh, called for a, secu a Security Council uh, urgent meeting before uh, on Syria, uh, despite all the chemical weapon use and all that uh, well, stuff. Well, this, this, you know, this is a demagoguery of the highest order. Demagoguery of the highest order. Uh, we have heard that we have called uh, meetings at, on various situations over the years. We have discussed Syria. We have discussed anything else. Uh, so this, this I just uh, don't know how to respond to because it is uh, demagoguery beyond my ability to respond. But as to blaming Russia for everything, and in fact, uh, is there anybody from the Washington Post here? I was, uh, this is the line which uh, they, have been, uh, they have been taking from, uh, from time to time. I was struck by the line which ended the editorial of the Washington Post yesterday. It accuses Russia of, Russia of a number of things, but then it says Russia launched millions of refugees from Syria to Europe in order to un under, uh, uh, destabilize Europe. You know, we have warned them not to invade Iraq in 2003, which caused the in ex extreme stabilization of the Middle East. We warned them not to stabilize Libya and not to engage a regime ch change operation there. We warned them a quick regime change in Syria was not going to work. They chose to, you know, pump trillions of billions of dollars of weapons to some strange people, so-called uh, moderate opposition groups who, who can, they cannot control any longer, you know. Uh, and, and now we, it's our fault that uh, refugees are going from Turkey uh, to Europe. So, of course, one can uh, blame Russia or anybody else for everything, but uh, I would rather they looked into the mirror and uh, we are more uh, realistic and pragmatic and truthful in their analysis of their own actions. Uh, are you, going to dis you, you quoted some of the agreements, some ex uh, yeah. excerpts. Are you going to disclose those uh, agreements uh, unilaterally? No, it's not our intention. But uh, you know, I think you now understand what it's all about. It is about uh, closer cooperation in fighting, uh, fighting ISIL. It is about making sure that humanitarian conditions in Syria can be improved. And it's uh, something which can provide a better basis for the political process. If they choose to go into demagoguery and they, if they maybe you know, score some political points, I think it's extremely, uh, extremely tragic, actually, that this, this is the state of political play in the United States. Thank you very much.